My opponent was 18-year-old Sambat Laputian, with whom I was later on friendly terms. We had been competing at the board since the spring of 1973, when in a friendly Azerbaijan-Armenian match Sambat lost with white, but twice defeated me with black in French defense. But those were his first and last victories. That same summer we drew in the All-Union Youth Games in Vilnius, and then I began beating him game after game. Laputian made his next draw with me in 2000, when he had already long been a grandmaster. Of course, on that memorable autumn day, my friend and rival was dreaming of revenge. Gary Kasparov. Hello, chess lovers, Soren here, and in today's video we will analyze that wonderful historical game played between Laputian and Kasparov. Laputian is 18, Kasparov 13, and this game is from 1976, Transcaucasian Youth Games. The event took place in Tbilisi and Armenian chess player opened up with d4 to which the future world chess champion answered with knight f6, c4 g6, knight c3 bishop g7, e4 d6. Kasparov goes for king's Indian defense against which Leputian chose the aggressive Zemish variation. In Zemish, as you know, usually white is castling queenside and then is throwing all his anger at opponent's kingside. Here the main move is castling kingside, but in the game we have knight c6. Bishop e3 a6, queen d2, rook b8. Black is preparing a queenside expansion, rook b1. With rook b1, white wants to go b4 and meet opponent's advance. Although having the rook on c1 or on d1 is a better idea. Usually this is where white is putting his rook. And in here, actually, knight e2 is the most popular move, but in our game we have rook b1. Black castled kingside, b4, e5. Kasparov writes, impatience. Later I discussed this position with Kufeld and we came to the conclusion that the waiting move bishop d7 was more subtle. e5 was met with d5 and knight d4. I really like this move. Knight g e2. Well, in case of bishop takes d4, just e takes d4 and you can't win a pawn because black has a very powerful blow. Can you find black's next move? Ready? The winning move is knight takes e4, a very very nice move. Suddenly this king's Indian bishop is jumping into the game and black is winning. If here then rook e8 is winning. Uh, that's why I decided to get rid of that knight with knight g e2, but Kasparov reinforced it with c5, although after d takes c6 he recaptured with a b pawn, insisting on that pawn sacrifice which white accepted. Rook goes on e8, bishop e2, and c5. So black is a pawn down and black has to act very quickly. If white can castle then can solve all the problems, that's why Kasparov is hurrying to hit up the position b takes c5 and now question arises how to proceed with the game. Ready? Here Kasparov landed a fantastic blow and he played knight takes e4. How do you like this beauty guys? After c5 followed by knight takes e4 suddenly like a spring, all black pieces are jumping into the game. f takes e4 there comes queen h4 check and g3. So far so good, but this g3 is a mistake and is losing. Let's first finish up the game and then I will turn on stockfish to see where things went wrong for white. Here comes rook b1 check, king f2. Kasparov writes, I remember that after this move, Sambat was about to stand up from the board, indicating that everything was clear, it was time for black to resign, but I did not allow him to stand. Instantly moving my rook one square, rook b2. On seeing my move, Sambat's face changed. It was clear to him that disaster had struck. What a wonderful move, right guys? The only mo winning move, by the way. So, white played g takes h4 and rook takes d2. Then an exchange on bishops on g7 followed. 
king e3, pressing the rook in order to go for c takes d6, rook c2 taking the knight, king d3, and rook takes c3, another epic move by Kasparov. Uh, let me tell you that rook b2 is not good because after c takes d6, white is getting a nice counterplay, white is getting mighty pawns. That's why we have an exchange sacrifice. King takes c3, d takes c5. Materially, we have equality, but white's position is totally lost. There are too many weaknesses. Now this pawn on e4 is becoming a target. Bishop d3, bishop b7, rook e1, rook e5. First blockading the pawn, and then f5 is coming. a4, f5, rook b1. In return, white is seeking a counterplay on the queen side, but white is too late. This pawn is running. f3, bishop f1. Bishop f5, check, king h6, king d2, f2. Now rook e2 is coming, that's why white played bishop e2, and now what? How to intensify the pressure? There comes bishop g4, trying to deflect the bishop. Bishop d3, rook e1, rook f7, and here comes a blockading move. Bishop f5, blocking the f-file, a5, bishop takes d3, rook takes f2, and in here again there is only one move which is winning. That move is... Now both pieces are hanging, that's why we must play rook f1. The only winning move, and after this move, Sambat Laputian resigned. Now let's go back to move... 9 and analyze from here on. We will go quickly. So Kasp Kasparov says that e5 is an impatience and together with Gufeld they came up with bishop d7 but e5 is a top move, why not? And we can't even see bishop d7 in the suggested lines. So e5, d5, then comes knight d4, knight g e2, c5. Look how accurate Kasparov is. D takes c6, b takes c6, the pawn sacrifice is accepted, and then we have rook e8. It popped up as a first move, then changed to c5, but I think that somehow I can feel that rook e8 is stronger. Yeah, and then again it popped up as a first move. So let's go for rook e8, bishop e2, and then another top move, c5. B takes c5 and knight e4, again the top move. By the way, let me tell you that from move 10 up to move 25, Kasparov spent only 15 minutes. Can you imagine that? 15 minutes to create a masterpiece. From here on, from here, this is move 10 when he's making move knight d4 up to move 25. Up to here, up to this point, he made d takes c5 on move 24 and he spent only 15 minutes creating this masterpiece. Let's go back. So, after bishop e2, c5, b takes c5, we have knight takes e4. f takes e4, there comes the check, and g3, which is a mistake. So, it was move rook b2, which Laputian missed, and actually the move is bishop f2, the best move. And it then leads to quick simplifications. King f2, bishop takes d2, rook takes b1, d takes c5. The uh, players have equal chances. If only Laputian could see rook b2, then no doubt he would go for bishop f2. But yeah, rook b2 turned out to be a surprise for him. Even in here, after king f2, he could not see rook b2. There comes that blow, rook b2, an amazing move after which, yeah, so at this point there is only uh, one move which is winning and that is rook b2. Now the queen is hanging, if you move it back, I don't know, on e7, then just rook takes b1 and white has an extra piece. Also, queen h6 won't help you, just queen takes h6 and again white is winning. If check, then just king g2. Uh, so, after rook b2 we have g takes h4 and rook takes d2. Takes, takes. We have uh, almost a uh, forced line, but yeah, we can see that Kasparov keeps on playing very accurately. 
13-year-old Gasparov is playing like a machine. D takes c5, bishop d3, bishop b7, again the top move attacking the pawn, then comes rook e5. This is amazing guys how accurate he is, f5. Rook b1 and the pawn drops. White then hurried to make use of his a pawn but he is late and now let's take a quick look once again how the game ended. And uh, again, the way Kasparov is technically realizing the advantage is, again looks very nice, you know, bishop g4, then rook e1, bishop f4, blockading, and yeah, rook f1, and white resigned. An amazing game, I am sure you enjoyed it, feel free to share with your friends as well, and in the end, a chess puzzle where the task is to win with the white pieces. As usual, we'll wait for your answer in the comment section. Thanks for watching, we'll see you in my next video. Take care.